say there's one you and you want to make an exact copy of yourself, you again. This exact copy of yourself that you've just made is known as a clone and the process is known as cloning. Where in today's video, we're not going to be talking about cloning yourself, which is something straight out of a science fiction novel or a movie, but we're going to be talking about cloning genes. Specifically, when we talk about cloning, we're going to be talking about making identical copies of specific genes. Now, how does this work? How do we make identical copies of the genes? So to do that, first we need to identify the gene that we want to work with. Say this is an organism's DNA, it's an entire genome and I've shown just a part of it. And in this part, we have identified a specific gene, a desired gene. It could be any gene, like the gene that codes for insulin or the green fluorescent protein, it could be anything. Now we want to make copies of this specific gene alone. It makes sense to just isolate this gene from the rest of the genome and make copies of this gene alone, right? Otherwise, we'd just be making copies of the entire genome, which is not very efficient. So what is a way to isolate this gene? How do we do that? So in biotechnology, genes are isolated with the help of restriction enzymes. So we learned about this in another video. Restriction enzymes act as molecular scissors. So we're going to take the organism's DNA and we're going to treat it with restriction enzymes. And the restriction enzymes, they're going to identify specific restriction sites, which are palindromic sequences. If you want to learn more about restriction enzymes, you can check out our video on restriction enzymes. So the enzymes are going to come and cut here wherever they find the restriction sites. And then you're going to get your gene. You're going to isolate the target gene, the desired gene. Now, how do we make copies of this desired gene? We're going to be using something known as a vector. A vector is usually a piece of DNA into which foreign DNA can be easily inserted and vector is something that can deliver this foreign gene into a fast replicating organism like a bacteria like E. coli that replicates quite quickly so that we get multiple copies of that foreign gene, that desired gene in a short period of time. So usually vectors are plasmids of bacteria or even bacteriophages which are viruses that infect bacteria. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this vector, which is now a plasmid here, and we're going to treat it with the restriction enzymes, the same restriction enzymes that we use to isolate our desired gene. So now we have a gap in the plasmid DNA and we're going to take the copy of our desired gene and essentially paste it here. So when we paste the gene along with this vector, with the help of DNA ligase, of course, we're going to get a recombinant DNA vector. So this right here, this is the foreign DNA, the foreign gene that has been inserted or integrated along with this plasmid vector. Now, what about this region here? This also is of a different color. What is this region? I'll get to that in just a while. So this is now a recombinant DNA vector. But this cannot replicate by itself outside of the bacterial cell. It needs to be inserted inside a bacterium like E. coli for it to replicate. Now, how do we do that? So we're going to take this recombinant DNA vector and we're going to add it to a culture of E. coli. Say the culture is in an append off tube. We're going to add the plasmids to the E. coli culture. But now there is a big question. How do we make sure that the plasmids will be taken up by the E. coli. Will E. coli take up the plasmid? Because it's free floating outside, right? The plasmid has been extracted from E. coli, has been made into a recombinant plasmid and is added back into the culture of E. coli. E. coli has a cell membrane that is selectively permeable. How can we make sure the E. coli cells take up this plasmids? Well, that question is answered with the help of something known as heat shock. This is one method by which scientists make sure that the bacterial cell take up the recombinant plasmids. So what is this heat shock? What they do is first they take this tube which has plasmids and the E. coli culture and they keep it in an ice bath for a short period of time. And then they immediately transfer it to a water bath that is at 42 degrees Celsius which means it's slightly hot right? 42 degrees Celsius is hot, right? From the ice bath directly into a water bath at 42 degrees Celsius and back again into the ice bath. So when this is done, ice, hot water and ice again, when this is done, this is going to cause 
pores to form in the E. coli cells. The membrane of the E. coli cells is going to become porous, which will allow the plasmids to enter the E. coli cells. So, in that way, the bacteria undergoes transformation when they take up the recombinant plasmids. So, this is the bacterial cell that has taken up the plasmid now. Now, in this mixture, in this tube, there could be bacterial cells that have not taken up the plasmids as well. How do we differentiate between the cells that have taken up the plasmid and the cells that have not taken up the plasmid? We are going to be using this part of the DNA vector that we saw earlier which contains an antibiotic resistance gene. So what scientists do is that when they are ligating the desired gene with the vector, they also ligate an antibiotic resistance gene into the vector as well. So what is an antibiotic resistance gene? It's a gene that's going to make the bacteria become resistant to antibiotic treatment. So antibiotics are substances that can kill bacteria, right? So if a bacteria has this antibiotic resistance gene, then it becomes resistant or does not get destroyed by that antibiotic. So the scientists make sure that any bacterium that is taking up this foreign DNA is also taking up this antibiotic resistance gene. And when that happens, when the plasmid now has the desired foreign DNA and the antibiotic resistance gene, they are going to grow this culture, E. coli culture in a growth medium that also contains that specific antibiotic to which this bacterium is resistant. Say the bacterium is resistant to streptomycin, then they are going to grow the cells in a growth medium that contains that antibiotic streptomycin. So whatever bacterium that has taken up this foreign DNA and also this resistance gene, only that is going to grow in that culture. Only the plasmids that have taken up the foreign gene would exhibit or would produce the protein that gives the resistance to those bacteria, right? The other bacteria that are not resistant to the antibiotic, they are not going to grow at all. They are not going to grow and form colonies at all. So, they are going to be killed by the antibiotic. So, now this way, scientists can differentiate or isolate the cells that have actually taken up the plasmid that has the desired gene. These cultures are isolated. And when these cultures, when the cells in these cultures, when they are replicating, when the DNA is replicating, then the copies or clones of the desired gene is made from which we can extract our desired mRNA or protein. Keep in mind that it is not at all times where proteins are the target. Sometimes even mRNAs can be the target. If you think back to a couple of years, there was a widely popular mRNA vaccine for COVID-19, right? So, how did they produce that mRNA? They isolated the gene from the virus, the COVID-19 virus, and then they made copies or clones of the gene and they extracted the desired mRNA from that culture, which was then developed into the vaccine. In terms of proteins, gene cloning is used to produce a lot of desired proteins like insulin at a large scale level. So this is all about gene cloning where we are going to use a vector to produce multiple copies or clones of a desired gene.